Hello and welcome to another video where today I'll be running through advanced variances as part of standard costing and within this session I'll be focusing specifically on material variances. Firstly, a quick reminder of what standard costing actually is. A standard cost for a product or service is a predetermined cost per unit set under working specific conditions. The idea behind using standard costing is that it gives the business greater control by being able to compare the actual cost of producing products to the standard cost. This also ties in with budgeting because by having a standard cost of producing one product, it easily allows the business to scale this up or down depending on how many units it plans to produce. This then has a potential to allow for budget managers to be assessed clearly between the actual and standard costs as part of a performance review. As you can probably guess from the above, standard costing is more suitable for a business who produce a high number of identical or at least very similar products or provide a standardized service than it would be where the product or service is tailored specifically to each customer. Let's have a look then at a material variance overview. When a business calculates its material variances, it will split them into two separate variances, the materials price variance and the materials usage variance. If we were to add the two together, it would equal the total material variance. Let's now take a look at each of these in more detail. We'll start off by looking at the materials price variance. And the question that's been asked when calculating the price variance is, did each unit of material cost more or less than what was budgeted? If each unit of material costs less than the business expected, they will have a favorable price variance. And if it costs more than the standard price, then there will be an adverse price variance. To calculate the materials price variance, we need to multiply the actual materials purchased by the standard price. This will give us how much the material that was purchased should have been bought for. We then compare this figure to how much they actually paid for the material with the difference between the two being our materials price variance. Let's put this into an example. In the table on screen now, we can see the budgeted and actual units produced by a business along with the materials used and the cost of those materials. To calculate the materials price variance, we first need to calculate the standard cost per kilogram of material. To do this then, it would be the cost of 157,500 divided by the 37,500 kilograms, giving us a cost per kilogram of £4.20. From here, we can multiply the standard cost per kilogram by the actual materials used of 36,040 kilograms to give us 151,368 pounds. This is the standard cost of the materials actually purchased. And we can now compare between this figure and the actual cost of those materials to give us our price variance. This would therefore be 180,200 pounds less 151,368 pounds to give us a material price variance of 28,832 pounds. Now, as the business has spent more than expected, this would be an adverse variance. Now, moving on to the materials usage variance, which is measuring whether the business used more or less units of material than expected. Let's take a look at our previous example and calculate the materials usage variance. We first need to determine the standard amount of material used to produce one unit. This will be calculated by dividing the budgeted materials used of 37,500 kilograms by the budgeted production units of 5,000. The expected usage per unit is therefore 7.5 kilograms per unit. We then apply this to the actual production. We actually produced 5,300 units. So if we multiply this by our expected usage per unit of 7.5 kilograms, this gives us the amount of material 
in kilograms that should have been used, which in this case would therefore be 39,750 kilograms. The next step is to compare this to the actual material use of 36,040 kilograms. We can now calculate the difference between the two, which gives us 3,710 kilograms. So what we're saying here is that we've used 3,710 kilograms less than what was expected for the number of units produced. The last step is to convert this to a monetary value. We do this by multiplying the 3,710 kilograms by the standard cost per kilogram calculated during the price variance, which was £4.20. This gives us a material usage variance of £15,582. And because we use less material than what was expected for the number of units produced, this would mean it's a favourable variance. Right then, moving on to reconciling. The materials price variance and material usage variance should add back together to come to the overall materials variance had we just flexed the cost of material from the budgeted amount to the actual amount. Our final check is to make sure the numbers reconcile. First, let's flex the material cost. This would be 157,500 divided by 5,000 units and then multiplied by the actual number of units produced of 5,300, which gives us a flexed amount of 166,950. The actual cost of material for those units was 180,200, giving us a total material variance of 13,250. And with the business spending more than expected, it would be adverse. Let's now reconcile this with the price and usage variances. The materials price variance was 28,832, adverse plus the materials usage variance, which was 15,582 favorable, equals the total materials variance of 13,250 pounds adverse. So we can see from this that the figures reconcile. So now let's look at the causes of variances. And again, these can be split between the price variance and the usage variance but do be aware that the two can often be linked. Some of the common reasons for materials price variances are as follows. Bulk discounts may be given for buying in larger quantities, a change of supplier, or increased or decreased quality of materials. Then some of the common reasons for material usage variances could be linked to the price variance, increased or decreased quality of material, more or less efficient working practices, or more or less experienced staff than expected. And that wraps up this video on advanced material variances. I hope you found it useful, and if so, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.